these people next week? What do they do? And there's so many unanswered questions here, and I really don't understand why we're, why we're dealing so much with one partnership school. And will, will we do the same thing for all partnership schools, or, or just parts? Let's hear it's, from it's Vivian not clear to me there, a piece of the answer. Welcome, Ms. Akshia. Good afternoon, board presidents, president, board members. The particular piece you're looking at is for detached services in the board report and does not address the number of individuals who have been hired, uh, precision Yeah, I, I, I realize that, but there's just this unanswered question in my head. We're dealing with, you know, the, one of the partnership schools. Five or six people there, and, and I'm concerned about that because when you look at it, a lot of them are being on a being hired on a basis. So it looks like we're creating a dual system for partnership and yes. for district schools, yes. Yes. and that there are just a lot, lot, lot of a lot of questions here. The and then I think about the number of people who are not rehired so far, who are our district employees, and I don't see anything in here about this. As a brief update, as we are completing assignments for the traditional calendar schools that will begin September 7th, uh, approximately 4,300 of our RIFT employees have been rehired. What about the many? 4,300 approximately, and I will provide you with an aggregated report shortly. There are about 1,500 employees who are have been processed as substitutes. They are still waiting on reemployment lists, and when the opportunity arises as a result of additional retirements or positions that are purchased, we will invite them back. In other words, you're dragging your feet. happy at the end of the week once all the assignments have been completed to provide you with the second there's uh, there, there are quite a few people. Especially when charges are taken over, and mostly the older people. And they have been told that we don't want to hire you, and they go to these workshops and to the job positions, and they are not being hired. You know, nobody thought 15 or 20 years in your career you'd be out here looking for a job. So what do we owe these people? And, and are we just going to say you're a substitute, and, and they have to work day to day? Or do, we, do we give them more than that? I don't know what to say to them. I just need an answer for them. responsible for the assignments of individuals in the system. We work very hard with them to continue to find opportunities for employment. Any vacancy that existed, we work with the local district superintendents to fill them with the employees who are currently displaced. They're just going to wear your people out. They're going to no, 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 no. You know, Mr. Superintendent, I look at the list. It's a very short list. And you have thousands and thousands of employees. And, and we're finding jobs and some of the costs, and I know we aren't paying it, it's dispatch services to uh, a partnership school. But, but there's an inequity here, and you have hundreds and hundreds of teachers who don't have jobs in a week, who don't know where they go, how they're going to eat it. We aren't making any promise other than a substitute. So if we hire you as a substitute, if you get a job as a substitute, this will be your income. Do we have any more to tell these people? We've worked with folks to let them know that as soon as each week we have retirements or we have uh, individuals who resign, we hire people back for that. Uh, our population year over year on our budget dropped by 17,000 students. Yeah, and we also lost school. the funding of the era funds. But you know, we, we lost 17,000 students, mm -hmm. but the charges aren't rehiring our teachers to teach them. That's probably true, yes. Yeah. So, so there has to be somewhere. I don't know if it's in the charter uh, agreement or what. But somebody's got to hire these teachers, you know, and I, it, it's difficult to be out here looking for a job after you thought you had chosen a career in teaching and you, you're a pretty good teacher, a good teacher. Uh, so, uh, I don't know what our answer is, and, and, and we don't have one today, and school opens before we're back again. Dr. Vladovic? Marie, it's just a partial answer, but... Um our great superintendent of public instruction, Tom Torkelson, took $50 million away from our district 
and we add latitude. That would buy us 450 counselors tomorrow. He's now going to audit every one of our schools every year because he's mad because we complained about his decision. That man has cost $50 million of general fund money. We're going to pay $5 million a year for the next 10 years. And he's now going to get us. And that's our great superintendent of public instruction. That guy screwed up. How much USC. money do you make? Can you You're corrupt. some money right now. He took it away from us. He had latitude. I can tell you the whole story about it. Okay. Oh, you you answer, answer, <laughs> is it a bedtime story? It does not answer this See question the vet locally. Okay? And somebody needs to address it. Hopefully before next week, the uh, superintendent will come out with something because uh, it's easy to say Tarlickson didn't do it, the, the, the governor didn't do it. But when you put, when, when you ask the question as a board member, I'd like to have something that I, I can say to them. And right now I have nothing. He had the money, he fined us. Okay, I see Mr. Kaiser would like to make a comment. I wanted to know what the new school, or what the school is hoping for the new school year. Um, how many of them are fully complimented with their faculties? Or how many of them, how many of them are still Please short stop. in terms of full-time staff? It, it's our expectation that all schools will be fully staffed on the first day of school. We've been working with them to make sure that every vacancy is filled. And that includes the next part? With new hires, my understanding as of last Friday, we can have final Fully staffed. May I just clarify one point? Yes, Any yes, detached yes. person going on leave actually opens up a vacancy where someone else can be hired back into that position. So that becomes another opportunity for additional hiring. Thank you. Mr. Zimmer. One other thing, uh, I, I know as a former principal, sometimes you put money aside in TPA accounts or auxiliary accounts until sometimes you found the right person. So I just want to make sure that every school is using all the funds they have for personnel that they are hiring people. Because the word out there is some are sitting on money uh, in various accounts, so we need to tell them, you've got to spend it. Mr. Kaiser? Uh, coming back to Huntington Park, our, I understand several positions are filled with substitute teachers yes. rather than full-time teachers. Is that, I know that was the case a few weeks ago. Is it still the case? Several weeks ago when there were still vacancies, off-track teachers at Huntington Park were serving in substitute capacity in the vacancies. Our understanding was of last one. Friday was Ariana that everything was yeah. happened. The first day of school, they sent me to a different room. Thank and you. they had a sub subbing in my job. Board members, I really have been moved in the second day. Are there Are objections? Are you working there now? Yeah, Seeing yeah. so what order? room are you in? Let's 37. go to item <laughs> Are you in the school seven. of justice? Or did you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, if you are a speaker for item 7, this is review and evaluation process for public school choice proposals. Okay. All right, I can start my time. Mom. My name is Molly Bell, and I'm straight out of Compton by way of L.A. County. And uh, I'm here with a group called ASLA, and we're advocates for schools in exile in South Los Angeles. And uh, we're here, I'm part of the group called the Church Committee, and we're under Pastor uh, Patricia Strong Barnes. And we as God's people, we're in disagreement with the takeover of charter schools for public schools. In fact, we think it's against the law. We think it's illegal. And I want to let you take for you guys to have the law. about as God's people is that we believe in history. We believe in legacy. When you take a charter school like Henry Clay, drop the name and change it to Amino 3 and Amino 4, what happens to that legacy? What happened to that 50 years of history? Where does it go? We need the answer to that. We also believe that we should have the best schools with the best schools. 
course. Yet and still, of the 13 charter schools, eight of them have lower school, lower scores than 650 of them. In fact, Lock High School, not one of them. The Lock, the, the Lock High Schools, none of them have a, a score over 610, 611. So how does a school, a charter school that has low scores, haven't proved itself, never worked with middle age people, with middle school people, get a chance to have another school? So we're believing. We're going to call uh, the Attorney General of the state. Lining the pockets of the board members. If there are schools being taken over by Green Dot in other parts of the city, because I do believe that um, from what I read in the paper last week, the public schools are still rated higher than any of the schools. Green Dot and a five-minute telephone interview. I have a PhD from I mean, UCLA in administration. They gave me a five-minute telephone interview. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We won't, don't call us. We'll call you. It's a racket. It's called a racket. Thank you. Speaker number four. Green Dot is a racket. Speaker number four. At least Pink Dot goes shopping for you. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Brown. I'm a displaced teacher sure. from North High Middle School. Uh, uh, I uh, put 19 years into that particular site, learned a lot of things from the district, thought I was a pretty professional and competent teacher over those years, and now I see it all diffused, and I'm wondering where do the service go for those kids that need some support services to access the general education curriculum, especially if they're special needs students or students that are learning a second language. Where do they go? Where have they been accommodated? Have they been accommodated back at Henry Clay? Is that community-based school the same now that it's an offer? I want you to seriously look at what is happening with the educational dollars in our schools and how it's being applied. It takes a while to build a community in school. The charters go after the same thing. They are going to have to figure out how to provide students that have been impacted by poverty, students that don't have a facility for English language, to access and graduate high school. Please consider that in all of your next decisions that you make on public choice. I feel that as a participant of public choice too, and getting it approved by Cortinas and then having it ripped away yes. served nobody. It didn't serve the charter or the community that it's supposed to. It takes years to be able to communicate with the people in the community. Sir, this sir, is a professional sir, obligation to you first, me second. Don't disempower me. I've been to two different interviews. Okay? I've been to two different interviews. I'm sort of fortunate. I have a unique credential where I can teach a variety of special needs students. But there is more at stake here. Think about it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Speaker number five.
Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Juanita Gonzalez, and I'm a proud public education teacher for LASD. Yeah. And my mom, Ruth Gonzalez, taught at West Coast, said to say hello. Um, teacher of the Year, you remember her. Uh, my comments are about the right of the parents to choose what school comes into their community. You took away that right. It is very important for our parents to be empowered for their school and their community, and you're taking away that, that choice of theirs by doing away with the public vote. We need to put it back in. We need to make that public vote binding so that you cannot take their voice away. And that also ties into how this group of people up here came up with your public school choice plan in the first place, where you stated what schools would be under that plan, and all of a sudden you're giving away schools that aren't even built yet to outside entities. No more school his voice as to their chance to have a school in their community. I am part of the East LA design team, a very proud part of that team. We're working our butts off to get a plan to the board for that school. Don't bother. They won't we shouldn't even be it. having to write a plan. We should open that school as a public school. Yeah. Yeah. Built by the taxpayers, not the corporation. That school is a community school of East LA. That is their school. That is our student school that live in that community. It is not a Green Dot school. It is not an Alliance school. It is an LAUSD public education school, and that is the way it should stay. That is the way every brand new school that you build should be. Okay? Parents and teachers, that live in the community, you have teachers that live in that community. They deserve a right to open a school in their community without having outside people come in. And we need to keep the parent vote binding, and they need to have their decision in what, who they want to run their school. They need to be able to pick their principal, they need to be able to pick their teachers, pick their administrative team, and not have anybody else tell them who is going to run that school for them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker number six. <laughs> Item number seven, speaker number six. Welcome. Is it looking for speaker number six? If there's no speaker number six, we'll go to speaker number seven. All right, thank you. Ma'am, I think she's, are you speaking on the item seven? No, no, she's with me, um, two. And are I you six me. or which? No, one? I am number seven. Oh, okay. Jefferson, are you helping me? Speaker number seven, item number seven, speaker number seven. I'm number seven, seven. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Lamont and Mr. Vladovich and Ms. Robinson, how are you? And to the rest of the board members. <laughs> My slave name is Eva Hawkins. My African name is Yah Asantiwa. This is my second time speaking on this issue. I have a friend here who is my backup. Like I said, I'm a little timid. This is Beverly Roberts. She is the president of the UNIA, which stands for the Universal Negro Improvement Association, Marcus Garvey. If you would give me permission, I will now read what I was given to read. Good afternoon, <clears throat> Los Angeles Unified School Board. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. I come to you having taught more than 35 years, 
26 years of the 35 were with the Los Angeles Unified School District. I enjoyed working with students and parents and continued to work with them. Memories continue to be indelible in my mind of enlightenment from parents about their children. The information coming from these parents allowed me to truly provide the educational service needed for each child's academic growth. My experience and observation of the parents I worked with showed that they were willing to make sacrifices for their children so their children could be safe while being educated. We are all aware of the mother jailed because of policies made that didn't give her the freedom to send her children to the school that was more convenient. This mother, an asset to society, earning her degree to become a teacher, truly made a sacrifice by using her father's address when other families had done the same. Unfortunately, by going to jail, she now jeopardized losing her opportunity to be a teacher. Board members, as an asset to society, it deeply concerns me that a public school that is showing signs of improvement could be turned over to a corporation yes. that will possibly prove in a few years to be an act of... Okay, well, thank you. Thank and you very I, much, ma'am. Uh, I would like to leave this with someone. Absolutely, and you can leave it for us right there. We'll okay. put and it on the... And we'll, we'll throw it away. So the last point the is, is this too show pass. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Board members, uh, we've heard the seven speakers on item seven. Uh, item has been moved and seconded. Sir, uh, sir. Uh, you're number one for item seven? Item tab seven. Tab seven. Number one. All right, sir. Good afternoon, board members, superintendent. My name is Walter Walls. I am a parent of the LAUD student in downtown Magnus. I echo the things that have been said, so I don't want to be redundant for the things that have been said. I support that. This is about public school choice. However, I do think we might need to rechange that title because you're not giving the public a chance to make their choice. <laughs> Let's get real. I understand politics. I've been around in LA Unified for 44 years. I understand LAUSD. I understand big money. We know that big money is being pushed into Green Dot. We know that Green Dot is coming to be really there to try to move away public school and take school away, whatever, whatever the cause is. Unfortunately that we don't have the support that we need at the state level. And that's a sad thing. But let me say this. Here's what really puzzles me and bothers me the most. How I'm in board district four. That's our president, Monica Garcia. That's my board member. And board, then we have board district three. Then we have board district one. I'm trying to understand how we can move from district four to district seven out of Henry Clay and put it. Disrespect Ms. Lamont, who is supposed to be the board member of District 1, and this become a board district, what is it, R? I'm trying to understand that. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm trying to understand, Ms. Garcia, my board member, how you become the board member of Henry Clay. To make money! It don't make sense to, to me. make money! No, it's all about it's all about the money. Show me the money! I did go through the classroom, all the way to college even. So I'm trying to understand. I need somebody to explain that to me later. <laughs> Mr. Superintendent, since you're over instruction, maybe you can help me with that. Right on, right on. The other thing is this. Our children generate the dollars in LAUSD. Not community-based organizations. Not big business. Children, parents make the babies. 
If there is no parents, there's no children. If there's no children, there's no dollars. Let's get real with each other. Let's stop playing games. I'm hoping that we can get the parents can hear me and so that parents can step forward and let us take back our educational system. We need public and school. We do not need the Board of Education just doing what they want to do with school. I know we're in budget short. I understand all of that. But let's also, let's get real Thank board members and do the right thing. Thank you. The one you lost. Sir, did you have a question? I'm sorry. I'll get used to these buttons. So we've just heard we've just heard the public speakers, and now yeah. yes, and I'll, I, I the speaker asked a question about the uh, how, how the local district changed for Clay's. Yeah. I wondered if I, I'd be interested to hear the answer to that as well. Yeah. Local district change for us. No, when when she can't understand the question. Okay, so I can't talk to you and the board member at the same time. Oh, Let me really? speak to the board member. No. Thank you. When board when no wait. This was worth driving downtown. For. I so back the to the respectful conversation. The when charter schools uh, have a campus to run. They are independent of any district in LAUSD. So when a board votes on a charter school, they become in a separate entity. And they're tracked um, in a, in a uh, coding we call R or T, depending on the type of charter. They're not part of LAUSD. So whether it would be a Spire or a Green Dot, or whether it would be Synergy or Magnolia, any charter in that case, isn't part of the traditional structure. They still absolutely reside in the same physical structure, meaning that in the clay case, they're in the original location, that that doesn't change. But it's tracking changes for state reporting. So when that decision is made, that's what occurs. You had a board item earlier for Riverside. That type of charter doesn't change. So it gets coded, I think, as local district well, local district three, board district two. two. Okay, local well, district two, excuse me. Um, that remains that way because it is an affiliated charter school. Are, are not the students at the, the charter schools still LAUSD students? Every student in a charter school affiliated or independent is considered an LAUSD student. But by state law, uh, funding and decision making is relegated to the chartering agency that the board authorizes. Thank you. Very good. So, thank so excuse me. Yes, Ms. Lawrence. So, um, I need clarification. Because when I submitted my email to Mr. Holmquist, he said they had looked in the records and could not find anywhere in the records where um, Clay or Green Dot 3 and 4 had been given to to you, Madam Chair. So then I went to find the school and I saw that Green Dot was now assigned to you in region, not R, but region 2. 2. Okay, District 2. So I'm confused. Did this just start? Because it hasn't started with all of the other charter schools. So is this a new rule, a new policy that the board did not have a right to, to vote on? Because this is the first time I'm hearing this because Mr. Holmquist told me he didn't find it in, on the internet until I found it and sent it to him. So we need an explanation here. You know, we, we can't summarily change policies because the name Lamont appears. And if I go in, in here now, I'm going to find that every charter school has a different board member because all the others I have have my name to it. 
That's right. So when you speak to Ms. Muckett, I didn't understand the email exchange between you and Mr. Holmquist. Oh, well, I you sent you a copy. Yeah, you have $275,000 a year. You can't understand English. Data set, so when you go to the district, and you look up my mistake, my mistake. Or are you talking about school fines? Plus a house in Brentwood. Don't forget. I had some parents call me and say, when did you give up your territory? I said, I have not given it up. I said, what are you talking about? They say, go to find the school. You're no longer listed there. Now, it's animal, but it's really clay. Clay has been in that district for years. You cannot take the culture of clay out of there. You might change the name, and you need to look at changing the name, too. And we're asking that it remains Clay Middle School. Kids don't know anything about animal, that it's not a part of the culture. So, so let's just get the business straight, the policy straight. What will I find when I go to the computer? Will I find in every person's situation where there's a charter school that if the board member has been changed? All I want is board member. equity, the board member. Jose, would you respond please to the policy by which we locate independent charter schools? Yes. No, no, no. I don't want him to do that. I want him to go to find the school. And when he gets to Clay or to one of the other charter schools, I wanted to show that it's no longer for the board member. It's a new charter school and it's under Monica's name. Okay, I just checked out my phone. For Animo Middle School 3, Animo Middle School 4, those are the two campuses on a public school choice that, were, that are now located on the Clay campus. They are right now listed, and I'll get, get to the other piece, Board District 1, Marguerite Lamont. So you changed it this week? It was changed, part of the response. Let me let me back okay. up now. Okay, I just want to be sure, because I'm not crazy now. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I just want to say that. On to the issue of, of how it gets there. So a charter submits a uh, petition and has an address. These petitions, to get very big detail, were approved in January before the board's decision in public school choice. At that time, they had listed they were in board district two. Bottom line, after the board decided in, in uh, March that these two campuses would be there, the board then amended the charters in May. Obviously, there would be more District 1, and we did not catch that up to the find a school. That's the, 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 the research that our team and working with the data team did. That's the res response. There's been no policy change, no, no direction to staff otherwise. The reality has been fixed. You go to find a school right now, more District 1 is listed. It was just an error in catching up. That's it. And, and uh, Mr. Gutierrez. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I... I Come in at another time, because that's something else. And I want you guys to know, these constituents out here read. They're intelligent. Sure. And they don't take this, they come back to me. And there's a form that says three and four were approved in January, as you said. But it was at the March 15th meeting that it came to the board. So they're asking me, well, Mr. Mott, if we gave it to them uh, in January, why did it not hit the board until March 15th? And we didn't know anything about it. Okay, so that's another discussion that we have. You, you know, there are a lot of inconsistency. Though. My word is access and equity all the time for the kids, for the, for the students, for the administrators, for everybody. Just give us access and equity. Okay? So somebody blew it on this. Let's just say somebody blew it. Okay? Because earlier this week, when I sent it to Mr. Holmquist, it, it was copied right from Find the School. Okay? So I think we just need to be honest with each other. And, and, and quit trying to pull the, 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 the something over my eye and just say, hey, somebody blew it. Didn't catch it. Yeah. And that's right here. Thank you, Mr. Madam President. Can we please get back to the agenda? We have several contentious oh, items. You know what? This is the agenda. You're being an unstructured baby. You're going to I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Martinez. This is the agenda. Okay, thank you, board member. I saw Mr. Zimmer had something. And I have another comment.
I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. If you want to put Clay back on the agenda, go ahead. We have an agenda to follow here this afternoon. Thank you. Let's go to Mr. Zimmer. You had a question? I have a a number of questions for the I'm going to ask the audience please to refrain from the loud comments. Thank you. Um, I have a number of questions for the superintendent. Good afternoon. I'm former Senator Gloria Romero, now the Executive Director of uh, Democrats for Education Reform. Oh, and I want to acknowledge a many of the parents sitting up in the balcony, they didn't get here in time to sign the card, so I hope that part of what I articulate will be articulated on their behalf. Uh, I appreciate there's much passion and different points of view in this room. Probably most of us are Democrats. Undoubtedly, most of us are progressives. I know Mr. Zimmer, you and I probably share a great deal of our background. I think the point is, is to have a civil conversation, putting kids first. And to me, I think, you know, and I am here with all due respect for Member Zimmer to oppose the resolution, which you, I believe, in good faith authored. I do think, however, when this original resolution was passed two years ago, this board in this room took a very bold step forward. It was a courageous step that said, we are going to break with the dysfunction and culture in our district, which you proudly recognize, and said, we're going to put children's interests first. We're going to go ahead and put the mirror up to ourselves and challenge ourselves. That book, I believe, it wasn't about real estate. It wasn't about them or us. It, it, it wasn't about control, and I hope it wasn't about just kids as debit cards. It was about saying, let's be bold, let's be innovative, let's think outside the box. Oh, I hate that phrase. Once in a while, to do something different, to challenge ourselves to do better. And that is what I think this resolution accomplished. That is why, and I commend and applaud the progress with new leadership that you demonstrated just recently. You are to be applauded. I think, though, at this point, to approve this resolution today turns the clock back. We can be better. We can challenge ourselves. Let's move forward. Work out whatever needs to be remedied. That resolution wasn't perfect. But with all due respect, Board Member Zimmer, this resolution today puts us back into an isolation mode where it becomes about us and us only. I dare us to continue to dream and be bold. And as a Democrat, I urge us to continue the realization that education is ultimately the civil rights issue of our time. Let's continue to think bold and dare to challenge ourselves to think outside the box. I sincerely hope that you reject the resolution today, and I look forward to you having a debate about a substitute process that perhaps can move us forward, but certainly not turning us back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Board member, that concludes the speaker, Mr. Zimmer. Thank you, uh, President, uh, Board President. Why would we ever turn outside the district if our superintendent, widely regarded as the leader of quote unquote school reform nationally, believes an in district plan is exceptional? Why? Why? There is no reason, no reason we would do this if public school choice were about assuring excellence for every child. There is every reason we should adopt this resolution from the perspective of our data from the perspective of stability, from this perspective of putting kids first. The data around public school choice and our district in general can be read in many ways and can be manipulated to support almost every perspective in this debate. But the data, combined with the feeling in our schools, combined with the energy in our schools, speak one undeniable truth. The status quo is dead. Our schools are improving. Failure has become the exception rather than the rule, and the extraordinary is more and more likely. There are those who will say that these changes that make us gratified but not satisfied in the words of our superintendent are because of a gun held to our head known as choice. Startlingly willing to employ war imagery our reform advocates tell us it is only their, 
they had only their fingers on the trigger that had made this district change. But the data tells a different story. The biggest gain in our district come at our relief schools. Schools that are no longer overcrowded, no longer year-round. There are remarkable success stories. Garfield, Hollywood, Kim Middle School, Plummer Elementary School. But what is far more telling are the overall numbers. Our relief schools left 27.7 points last year. The data just released today compared to only to 19 points at the district average. It is a pace of improvement that has continued since we started pulling schools off concept six calendars. Why am I mentioning data? Because it proves what we already know. There are many problems in public education, and yes, good teaching is extremely difficult. But the biggest issue leading to three decades of public education failure in Los Angeles wasn't that our teachers aren't or weren't good enough. It wasn't that they had a union, and it wasn't that that union had a contract, and it wasn't that they had health care. It wasn't because of our students, and it certainly wasn't because of their families. And although I do believe in choice, a lack of choice was not the primary problem. The problem was that our kids were in criminally overcrowded schools on an illegal, on an illegal, on an illegal year-round calendar that made kids from poor neighborhoods get on buses for hour-long trips that wouldn't have been tolerated. They did this for 30 years, and that would not have been tolerated for 30 seconds in affluent communities. Conditions matter. Conditions matter. And when conditions improve, teaching and learning excel. But if and only if, our kids and their teachers and their support staff get to be there. In the negotiation